Welcome, everyone. Uh, good, uh, get a chance to see the keynote. Everybody fired up for the week? Yeah? All right, great. Well, hopefully we'll keep that energy going in this session. And uh, for a brief intro, hi, I'm Will Granis, and I'm the CTO of Google Cloud. And I have uh, Ed and Massey joining me here. I'll let them introduce themselves. Ed? Hi, I'm Ed Liu. I'm a ex-Googler, spent some number of years at Google. Also had the privilege of being a NASA astronaut for 12 years, got to fly the space shuttle a couple times, space station, um, Soyuz in the mirror. And now working on finding and tracking asteroids to keep them from hitting the Earth, which we all like. <laughs> and uh, I'm Massimo, tough to follow that, uh, but actually I'm a senior director in the office of the CTO, mostly working on applied AI. All right, so Let's jump right in. We're going to talk about how the Asteroid Institute and Google Cloud are revolutionizing asteroid discovery. We're going to start with Ed. Okay, so Ed, uh, for those, of, uh, those in the crowd that may not be as familiar, what is the Asteroid Institute? What's your mission? What do you do? The Asteroid Institute is dedicated to protecting the Earth from being hit by large asteroids. And we're also dedicated towards opening up space because those two problems are linked. If you can open up space and you have commerce and capability within throughout space, then you can actually, it's part of the solution to protecting the planet. Now the real issue though that we have to solve is finding and tracking asteroids, because you can't keep an asteroid from hitting the Earth if you don't know it exists and you don't know where it is. And so that's the name of the game, finding and tracking asteroids. So uh, how did you get started with us, Ed? Well, uh, like I said, years ago I worked for Google, so I happen to have a lot of friends throughout Google, and um, one of the one of the best parts of being an, an ex-Googler is the connections you have to people, you know, incredibly smart people throughout the organization. So when it became obvious to us that, in fact, one of the principal things required to discover asteroids at scale is computation, the very first place we went to for help is Google. Ah, first in your hearts. That's, that's nice to hear. Okay, so Massey, there's a visual up on the screen now that the crowd can see. Um, Maybe walk us through uh, how we got started, what we're working on, and how we're trying to solve this problem. So uh, the, the problem that B612 and the Asteroid Institutes are trying to solve is um, a really fascinating problem from like, a computer science perspective. It's uh, extremely complex, actually. What they do is actually kind of is very complex computation. Uh, and actually, they, it's a very big data problem. Like they analyze these gigantic data sets of astronomical images, trying to discover for basically this needle in a high stack. That actually, it's not just a very apparent needle. It's something you have to discover via advanced computation. So um, one of the things that Google Cloud has been uh, really beneficial for B612 has been like the ability to uh, write pipeline on this very massive data and make them run efficiently. So they've been using Google Kubernetes Engine, they've been using Google Cloud Storage, uh, and, and so BigQuery and Cloud SQLs. They combine all this product to basically make this, this pipeline very productive. And I would say, apart from the computational perspective, like how do you run this stuff at scale? You really need like something like a cloud to do it. <clears throat> there is also the problem of um, a lot of those folks are researchers. And they're not like you know advanced computer scientists that kind of have tons of experience running thousands and thousands of CPU. So the ability to do that scale, the scale computation and do it easily in a way that they can easily manipulate and iterate, this is science. So they change things like really, really rapidly. And so that actually is paramount to what they've done. And uh, what you see kind of here in this architecture, you see like kind of the images kind of flowing into this pipeline, and they basically have this um, unified system that basically kind of process them in steps, and basically kind of has all the job results stored. It's a very complex pipeline in a sense, uh, but actually they, they have been able actually to build it in a way that is very productive and very efficient. So Ed, um Massey just walked us through the, the problem to solve, the overall architecture. Uh, let's talk about some results. Now this is where it gets exciting. So what we've done is we've taken an existing data set. It was, used, it was taken by uh, very large telescopes in the southern hemisphere. They were, they were looking to do other science. And what we realized is that there are many, many, many tens of thousands of asteroids in those data sets that nobody has noticed before. But, and, you can, and you can unlock them if you have enough computation. Thank you, Masi. And uh, so what we did was we went through this data set, and we've actually discovered tens of thousands of new asteroids. And, and this is super important because, again, this is the key to protecting the Earth from being hit by asteroids, is knowing where all these are. And at this moment, we are now one of the largest discoverers of asteroids on Earth. 
But what makes this interesting is that we don't own a telescope. We don't operate a telescope. We're doing this from a data science perspective. And, and um, not only can we find asteroids in data sets that were never meant for it, but we can make every other telescope in the world better at finding asteroids because they miss many of the asteroids because they don't have the computation either to do this. So the, building this scalable system is, is incredibly important. So what I want to show you is actually going to be a fun picture. We're going to start with the Earth. We're going to zoom back, and I'm going to show you the orbits of just the first couple of tens of thousands of asteroids that we've discovered. And um, so this is actual data of the Earth, and we're going to zoom back from the Earth. Each of those green dots is one of the asteroids that we've just recently discovered in the last few weeks. Okay? And as we move out into the solar system, um, we scan back around the solar system. That's the sun in the middle. We're going to start the, uh, the motion of the asteroids here. Again, these are all accurate orbits of asteroids we've discovered. You can see how many, in fact, of these asteroids we've discovered. The solar system is filled with asteroids. And what we are going to be doing is looking for ones that have a chance of hitting the Earth. So I want to give you the sort of grand scale image of the kinds of things out there in our solar system that are unlocked through the cloud. So one of the things I've been telling people is that it used to be that astronomers were limited in asteroids they could discover by seeing light particles, photons, into their telescopes. We, on the other hand, are limited not by photons in telescopes, but by electrons in data centers. It's computational. The computational power that's needed to discover these uh, is, is quite, uh, quite amazing. And, and all these discoveries were actually made in the computer, uh, which, is, which is kind of interesting to me. It's, it's a change in how astronomy is done. So uh, pretty mind-blowing. Uh, when, you, when you showed, you know, you started zooming out and you started seeing the asteroid paths. I was looking around the room. I think like everybody started leaning in. I don't know how many people have ever yeah. seen a comprehensive yeah, well, map of asteroid trajectories. What, what you're seeing is the, the orbits of uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. And then the you can see the asteroid belt. But you see a lot of asteroids in closer um, in the middle part of this screen. Those are the ones that have a chance of hitting the Earth. And we will check for the probabilities of those. And uh, obviously, we'll provide warnings if, if any of these is, uh, has a chance of hitting the Earth. OK, so uh, good news is we're finding them quickly, even those close in ones. So don't get too alarmed. I saw some faces go from smiles to a little bit of concern. It's OK. We've got the pros. They're on it. And uh, you know, maybe we have the next Bruce Willis next to us as well, just in case we need him. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I was really blown away by, in addition to just the discovery itself, was um, the way the teams work together. And so, Massey, I'd love for you to spend a minute or two just describing how the teams actually collaborated uh, to make these discoveries possible. Yeah, so, um, of course, like, uh, the basis of all this is the scientific um, aspect of it, right? I mean, there are very complex, as I said, computation needs to be run to detect those asteroids and understand where they're going and kind of track them throughout the images. Um, I think actually the really beautiful thing has been like kind of collaborating with B612 <coughs> as, as a team because uh, you have scientists, you have engineers, uh, you have guys like me that work more on, on AI. It's a really kind of um, not only kind of you know cross discipline collaboration, but also cross culture, right? I mean, like big companies, uh, small kind of uh, non-profit um, associations, and only actually in the in the kind of with a target of like doing something really good for humanity. Um, as Ed said, you know <clears throat> this actually kind of is a tremendous kind of uh, amount of discovery done just by scouring the images that are there already from other telescopes and that went missing. Uh, and I think actually kind of this actually is really kind of what motivated me and I think actually motivated a lot of like the team in kind of working hard towards this. So uh, you mentioned a couple things, uh, you know, the nature of working, what you're able to accomplish given access to computation. You also mentioned AI. Yeah. So, you know, early on the discoveries, mostly around kind of classic computing, um, scaled analytics. But Ed, give us a glimpse of what's ahead uh, what do what you think is on the horizon in terms of uh, discoveries, tools, methods, approaches? Yeah, what we're, what we're showing here is some actual images. This is what the images of the sky look like um, taken by these telescopes. And, and, and those moving dots on the left, circled by green, are, are moving asteroids. But the, what our 
um, analytics does is it allows us to tell us where to look, where we should be looking for these things, but what we do need to do is verify that in fact you're not being fooled because there are artifacts in the data set caused by cosmic rays hitting your detectors, bad pixels, um, galaxies, nebula, background, objects, things like that. They, they pollute your data set and what we've been able to do is train a very, very large training data set so that we can, and we've begun to use uh, AI methods. They're, 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 I would say, approaching the level that we can do with using humans to verify these things, but I think we're gonna quickly surpass that over the next few weeks, is my guess. Um, and um, I think AI is gonna be a very, very important part of this process, because as we discover millions of asteroids, this is not something that you want humans uh, verifying and, 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 and doing one by one manually. This is a really a, a job yeah. for AI. And, and let me add there that, I mean, you're seeing these images. Uh, not only these images are really hard, right? Even for a human, they're hard. I mean, um, this verification is currently done by people that are trained in astrophysics. They actually look at kind of thousands of those images. Uh, but the other part, actually, that I would point out is that this is a task that is, <clears throat> um, it's not very common for AI, right? I mean, you can actually easily find AIs that are trained on like worldly images, and actually kind of you have a lot of those images. Uh, this is actually something really out of the box. And I think actually, uh, to add point, um, <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to see how AI can perform potentially kind of beyond the human, because currently the big bottleneck of this work, believe it or not, is human verification. Because when you do science, you want to be precise and you want to be certain. So those things need to be verified. They're not just random numbers that we throw out there. And so currently, actually, the verification is done manually and is very, is a very, very kind of, you know, uh, slow if you want to respect to what the computation is. And so once we actually unblock that part with AI, this thing actually will even kind of uh, shoot off to other data sets and many other kind of discoveries. Yeah, I think it's going to become quite commonplace. <laughs> All right, so uh, amazing stuff. It, it just blows my mind that, you know, we t we're talking in terms of weeks or months in terms of the pace of discovery, the advance of the computation, the advance of um, some of the modeling that's being done so that we can actually use AI effectively for verification. And so it's just the pace of discovery, validation, verification, and also kind of the spirit of experimentation that I know has grown between our two organizations over these last months, which is hard to believe. Yeah, this is all happening very fast. I mean, uh, I, re I remember the first conversation we had about applying the computation specifically for this problem, and it was not a year ago, it was a few months ago. Yeah. Um, so really exciting to see that come to fruition. 